you students welcome back for the online sessions of your material science and metallurgy this is myself vivek pari your trader for your material science and metallurgy we were discussing about the heat treatments of the steel till now we have discussed about the different types of the diagram objectives of your heat treatment and in the last lecture we have started about the different types of the heat treatment methods in that we have started the word that is you can see on your screen that is the annealing we have started our very first method that is known as your annealing method in the annealing we have discussed two types of the annealing the first one that was the full annealing and the second one that is the homogenizing annealing in homogenizing annealing what we did we did for the thing that is the homogeneous throughout the sample in an alloy steel we were using this type of the heat treatment method so now let us continue forward for our very third method which we will be seeing that method is known as a recrystallization annealing the third method which is known as your recrystallization annealing now let us discuss what do you mean by the recrystallization annealing the process or the annealing process it is also secondly known as the process annealing or you can say the sub critical annealing so that is the two types of the name which is given the process and sub critical annealing name which is given to it what is this recrystallization annealing this annealing consists of heating the cold work steel you can see according to the application our annealing method kept on changing this over here we are going for the cold worked annealing what is the cold worked annealing that is in the cold state rolling forging or that type of the thing if you are getting the material of the steel then this method is useful so what we have to do we have to heat the material about recrystallization temperature soak it at the particular time and after that go for the cooling which way cooling should be done it should be always done in the furnace cooling because always you will be going for the slow type of the cooling process annealing is used to treat work hardened part whatever the work hardening we have saw in our unit number 2 that is the work hardening strain hardening strengthening mechanism for that part we are going to use this thing or you go for the low carbon steel then also we can go for the recrystallization thing what are the aims of using this thing restore the ductility the very first thing which we will be going that is to restore the ductility of the material we will be going for the recrystallization to refine the coarse grain if you want the finer grains then the coarser grains can be eliminated by the recrystallization annealing and the third and the most important to improve electrical and magnetic properties you see only in the recrystallization annealing you can find it out that is the electrical and the magnetic part or the properties can be improved with the help of the annealing that is recrystallization annealing as the little scaling and decarburization occurs in the recrystallization it is preferred over the full annealing ahead of the full annealing what we are using we are using this recrystallization but where if there is a work hardened steel or you are having the low carbon steel then and then we can proceed further for the annealing method that is known as a recrystallization annealing clear moving forward for the fourth method that is the spheroidizing annealing what is the use of this spheroidizing annealing it is one of the another type of the annealing method which we are using that is the spheroidizing annealing okay so now let us proceed for the spheroidizing annealing it consists of heating and soaking and cooling invariably very slowly to produce the spheroidized perlite now what do we mean by the spheroidized perlite let us see if we are having the thing that is you can see that if in a structure if whatever the perlite structure we are having this is this type of the dendritic structure it is having okay but this is the flakes which are having of the perlite this is the perlite but if this perlite is converted into the spherical form if the perlite which we are having from this if it is converted into the sphere spheroid that that type of the annealing treatment that is known as a spheroidizing annealing so here you can see spheroidal perlite or globular 
particular form of the carbide in the steel. So, by doing this thing, by getting the spheres, what is the improvement we can see? The improvement of the machinability is the maximum in this type of the steel. And in hyper eutectoid steel, the spheroidide annealing is applied. Where we can apply it? We can apply it over the hyper eutectoid steel. As we saw in the previous one, that it was process annealing or recrystallization annealing was used for the hypo eutectoid steel. But this hyper eutectoid, if you are having, that means cementite, it is more. So, for converting that cementite into the spheres and perlite into the sphere, we will be using this type of the spheroidizing annealing. Clear? So now, what is the due to this thing? Why it happens? So prolonged time at the elevated temperature will completely break perlite structure into the cementite network and the structure is called the spheroidite. Now, what is this thing happening? So what we are doing, we are going for the heating thing. That is the heating the steel above the AC1 temperature, holding it for the sufficient time and then followed by the slow. Now, austenite the steel at a temperature not more than 50 degree above A1 and cool very slowly. Then after that what we will be doing transformed into inhomogeneous austenite not more than 50 below A1. Go for the rapid heating cooling, heating cooling cycle. Heat the material above 50 degree, leave till whenever the temperature comes or falls below 50 degree from that line AC1, A1. Once again go for the heating above 50 A1, once again cool, so the subsequent heating cooling of the material will have to form the spheres of your thing. And that is how what will happen due to that thing the spheroidized annealing will happen and at the end go for the slow cooling. Now what are the advantages? Why we are doing this thing? The first one which we discussed that was the maximum hardening, oh sorry maximum hardenability we are getting. Maximum ductility, max, minimum hardness, the hardness is minimum, that's why its machinability and ductility is improved. And maximum softness we will get. Heating, cooling, heating, cooling, so what will happen? Your material will become soft. This is what happens in your spheroidizing and healing method. Moving forward for our fifth type of the thing, that is known as an isothermal annealing. What is this isothermal? This type of the annealing which are used for the steels to soften that thing. Whatever the alloy steel they are there, they are very much hard enough. So for softening of that steel, we are using this type of the method. What we will be doing? We will be going for the isothermal heating steel above the austenizing range that is 20 to 40 degree above it that cooled quickly to the temperature where we require cool rapidly to one of the temperature where we require and at that time kept this material for the very long period of time. After that whenever it get transferred into that temperature allow it to cool in the air. So what will happen? This is the rapid cooling annealing which is used. Suppose let us take an example heat the material about 915 degrees Celsius that is above A1 line or AC3 line. After that what you do, bring the material to the temperature of the bath which is kept around 700 degrees Celsius. So what will happen, the drastic change in the temperature will there from 910 to 700 degrees Celsius. And after that, keep that material for a very long time. And after keeping it for the very long time, go for the cooling in the air. So what will happen, you will get the perlite but the pores are very hard structure type of the perlite we get. The coarser type of the perlite we will be obtaining with the help of this isothermal annealing method. Clear? And the last method of the annealing which is known as a stress relieving annealing method. Now what do you mean by this stress relieving annealing? Let us see as the name suggests. Basically this type of the annealing is used to remove the stresses which are there or which are developed inside the material. So for removal of the stress we are going for the stress relieving annealing. Clear? So where we are using maximum for the cold work process steel. Whichever the material you are going for the metal forming for that thing you will be using the stress relieving annealing. Now it is used or it is carried out below the critical temperature, lower critical temperature which is at the 1000 degree Fahrenheit. And what 
what is the main aim of this thing what is the main aim of the particular stress relieving that is it will relieve the internal stresses and allow the highly capable of absorbing the load it can allow or it can absorb much more load clear why because we are removing it the stresses second one to increase the fatigue life and to prevent the intercrystalline corrosion so what is the happening of this thing to remove or to prevent the corrosion and increase the fatigue life we are going for the stress relieving to reduce the chances of the wear page or the cracking so whatever there is a chances of getting crack or any such type of the thing due to the cold working that can be eliminated with the help of the stress relieving fourth one to increase the impact resistance means if a sudden load is applied to the material then by the stress relieving angling what will happen the material has a capacity to withstand the sudden loads clear at the last one to change the dimensions in the service life that means by doing this thing there will be no change in the dimensions occurring due to the help of the stress relieving angling clear so this was your stress relieving angling and let us recall the different types of the angling method how they are used what is a1 line you can see over here that is our a1 line this is our a3 or acm line at the different types of the angling you can see stress relieving it is always done at the much more lower temperature process angling somewhat higher for hyper eutectoid whatever we are going we can go for this furnace cooling thing then due to this thing these are the different annealing method but remember one thing each and every time you will be going for the slow type of the cooling that is the furnace cooling we will be following clear so this was all about the method that is known as an annealing method so in the upcoming lectures we will be going for the different remaining method that is the normalizing hardening and tempering method clear and in this lecture we did the different all the annealing methods so stay back and come back to our next upcoming lecture of the annealing till then thank you